Hi everyone. I've had a few people enquire as to how they can install sound pools from DVDs. Now I've got a few of these myself, compliments of Magix themselves, and the problem that people have is that they say they add the sound pools, but then when they start Magix again, they've disappeared. And there's a simple reason for this. When you've got Magix open, here's the usual screen, at the top right hand side of the sound pools here is an options button. If you click on the options and click add new sound pools, it will search for those sound pools. So what you need to do is to find where those sound pools are. At the moment I've got a disc in my DVD drive down here and if I double click that and open that up, there are a couple of folders in there and there's the sample DVD. If I click that, here are the samples. Now if you, you can click on one of these, which is a sample, and if you click OK now, what Magix will do is it will actually incorporate those samples into the list here. But it will only make a reference to them it doesn't copy them to your computer. So what it will do is it will always look for those samples on that DVD drive. And if that disc isn't inserted when you start Magix the next time, all of a sudden the samples will have disappeared. So the best thing to do is to copy these samples to your hard drive to start with. Let's just cancel that. Now you could open a folder using Windows Explorer. Okay, I'm using Windows 10. There are other operating systems available, but I'm demonstrating this using Windows 10. You could easily make a new folder. If I went to where I normally store my videos, Magix, and you could say, make a new folder, give it a name, and copy them to that folder. But, let me just delete that this down. If you want them putting in a location where Magix puts its own samples, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the standard samples, use the basic, doesn't matter what it is, just put a track or an object into a track on the screen. If you right click on that object and look at properties, it will give you the name of that object here. Now I've mentioned before that this is not actually a piece of music or a sound, it's just an object. And what we can do, we can copy that by pressing Ctrl and C, highlight it, press Ctrl C, and if we then right click on the Windows button here, and tell it to search, you get a search engine come up, and usual Cortana, in the bottom here, paste, right click and paste that information into there. And Windows will show you where it's found the name of that OGG file. He ignore the HDP. And what you need to do is hover over each of these names and find one that doesn't contain the word temp on it. If you look at that one that says audio temp. What that is, is where Magix is now storing this object on my hard drive. So I want to find out where this object is actually stored or the music file to that object. And if you hover over each of these items, it will show you where it's been stored. And if you look at this one, it's not in the temp directory, it's actually on my hard drive. If you right click on that name and open that file location, Windows will open an Explorer window here as to where they are. And as you can see at the top here, it's quite a long way down a directory tree. It's dancing on my own and it's the base. Now what you can do here is click on the sound pause file there and you can then put a folder in here. So let's create a new folder and just put, um, let's say, disk 17 because I've got disk 17 in there.
and we'll double click on that. That's now an empty folder obviously. If you start another instance of Windows Explorer or the File Explorer, move it out of the way so you've got both windows on view, and then navigate to the, the drive that's got your samples in it. Here I'm on drive E. So click on that. Again, you've got here two executable files and usually Magix will try to install one of these but we don't want them. So we'll just double click on the sample and here are those samples on the DVD and they've usually got a, a demo song for each of the samples available and the easiest way to copy these to the hard drive we've now got disk 17 open there if you click and drag and drop copy that to that top folder like so now this is quite a long process down the bottom here it shows you the progress if we just move that out of the way and as you can see because it's copying from a mechanical device i.e. the DVD it's going to take quite a while to do it probably uh, 10 or 15 minutes something like that but let it copy it I'll speed this up a little bit and once it's copied the first sample you can then click and drag and drop the next sample in etc etc until you've copied them all into that folder what I tend to do as well is to highlight these demo songs highlight the first one hold the shift key down press the down arrow and drag and drop those into the folder as well like so again all of this takes time but at least you only have to do it once again I'll speed this up a little bit so we can move on and there we have those copied the noise you can hear in the background is my DVD drive whirring away which hopefully will uh, stop shortly once you've copied one of the, the discs you can go back to the samples and make another disk, make another directory and copy more disks but in the meantime I'm not going to copy all of these because it will take too long during this video but that is exactly the same you could copy those into there and you can copy the, the dance electro into there and you will then have all of those files on your hard drive we can close these down now we no longer need them we can close that down we can also delete this object, it was only a temporary thing that we needed anyway so we shan't bother with that let me just eject this uh, CD because it's annoying me there we go shut up DVD right. now if you go to the options button again and select add new samples you can now find them using the directory tree where they were in the first place so again I'm going to just navigate to where they were stored uh, which was users was it uh, default user or something like that uh, we go. users I believe it was, uh, was it default can't remember but navigate to where they were find disk 17 and in here now we have that breakbeat volume 1 if you click on that and then click OK Magix will now add those to your samples here at the moment it's put them in the bottom of the list it hasn't ordered it alphabetically but the next time you start Magix up and I'll demonstrate this now if you click on the breakbeat volume 1 here are your samples here are your instruments and here are your loops so it's now added them and Magix won't bother looking for that DVD anymore each time you want to use this sample let's just close Magix and restart it don't save the project this is now the, uh, the video recorder that I'm using this is actually what's recording the screen let's restart Magix Now you probably heard me eject that DVD, so that DVD is no longer in the drive. So where you would normally have lost that 
folder or that sound pool it should still be here let's just create a new project okay and if we now look up here we've now got that breakbeat volume one listed in alphabetical order in the sound pools and you can do the same with all of the rest of your dvds and they'll always be there well i hope you found that helpful thanks for watching